Well, hello, everybody. Hope you're watching. If you're watching on the replay, make sure to write hashtag replay in the comments, whether it's YouTube, LinkedIn, or Facebook. Love to know who's here watching it on the replay. Hello, everybody that's here. I am Robert C. Stern, and we're going to be having a great afternoon talking about the secrets to social media for 2022. So please type in the comments. Let me know you're here. Give me your name. Give me where you're from. Let me see what's going on out there. Love to hear from everybody. Like to see who's here. And we're going to go over some ground rules in the beginning. We're going to talk about social media for this coming year. A lot has changed. A lot has gone on. There's going to be so much to talk about. So please let me know you're here. Type something in the comments that you're here, you're live. Uh, questions along the way, please ask them. It is so important that you can be able to do this. I'm just making sure we are live in our locations that we said. So I see so Facebook. If you're watching on Facebook, hello. Hello, Paulina. Good to see you here. Uh, let me just make sure everything is working fine. Looks like LinkedIn is up and running. So if you're watching on LinkedIn, please say hi. And if I'm not mistaken, we actually have this going on YouTube also. So let me make sure and see what's going on. Looks like we are live, so we are good. So I hope everybody is having an amazing Happy New Year. Uh, D. Caffey, good to see you over from LinkedIn. Wonderful to see you on here. Perfect. Let me make sure. Perfect. There we go. All right, so we are up, live, and running. I cannot believe it is 2022, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, social media has been around for a very, very long time now. We're going back to almost 2006 in the public eye of social media. Some of these platforms have been around slightly longer, uh, but Facebook was kind of the kickoff of what we turned into and marketing started to take over. So we are here to talk about what's going to happen this year. What are the highlights and the things that are going to help your business on social media, whether it's to attract a bigger audience, whether it's to get more comments, get more shares, get more likes, more engagement, and which all leads to the bottom line, more business. Do you remember? Some things we have to remember about social media just to start off. And again, if you're just joining in, please say hi. Let me know you're here. Roger, good to see you. D, good to see you. Polina, good to see you. Barry, good to see you. Um, the other thing is, if you know somebody who might benefit from this, share it out. Let people know about it. It's okay. I don't like to keep myself a secret, and I don't want to keep you guys a secret. So get it out there. Let's help as many people as possible use social media to get the most out of it. Now, starting off about me, many of you may not know me that might be watching. I am Robert C. Stern. I have a company called The Social Leader. I've been doing this now 11 years. I started back in 2010. Uh, April will be the beginning of our 12th year. Uh, we are a social media agency. We help train, coach people with their social media, and we manage it for them. We also have a third side that we help create the content for you. So we've been doing this a while. We've seen so many changes over the years. Everything changes now on a week-to-week -week basis. There's that fear of missing out, that FOMO. We're all afraid. What's the next big platform or style or things that are going on? And we're going to go over some strategies to start off. There's a whole bunch of different strategies involved with social media. So let me just, you know, obviously check the comments here. Spiritual friend, good to see you. Miss Perla, how are you? Suzanne, how are you? So I am glad you are all here. We're going to go over, start going over things now. I don't want to dilly-dally. Now, 
I'm not the typical webinar guy. And for some of you that know me, I'm not the typical person on camera. I like to talk. I like to tell you things, not just put up a PowerPoint slide and read it. So you're going to see me more than you're going to see the other things. Um, so what we're going to talk about, social media 2022. So let's start off with the most important thing, strategies that work. Now, strategy for social media is just like a marketing plan for your business, but it's specialized for your social media. So when you are looking at your products and services and you, your branding, so those are the three areas we got to look at. Branding, product and services, and sales. So those areas are the ones we want to work on. There should be a social media strategy set up for all the different things that you do. So when I say that, and I'm going to pull people out of the audience and say their name maybe and what they do. So D Coffee, you're up there over on LinkedIn. You're watching and you are a real estate agent, a realtor in Westchester. Well, saying you're a realtor is a wonderful thing, but you're a realtor for many different products and services. You have your first time buyers, people looking for a second home, upgrading, luxury, downgrading. There's different avenues. And your strategies can change depending on the content you're putting out. So when you're specializing in a certain area or areas, multiple levels of different types of clientele, different types of products, your content needs to be strategized. So this week, we want to talk about buyers, and we're going to focus on first-time buyers. Well, then our content should focus about those things. So you want to have that strategy of every piece of content you put out has a strategy behind it of what the message is, what your branding is, and what you're trying to get perceived. Now, message and perceived is two different things. Just because you're trying to get a certain message out does not mean the public, your audience, is going to perceive it if it is not done in the way that it can be perceived. So there's a lot of moving parts in social media. You know, I can put out the greatest information in all, and I think it's wonderful, but it could be a dud. And it may not get the message across that I'm trying to get across. So we need to reevaluate what our strategy is on every piece of content. So I'm going to go over a few different types of strategies right now. And you're going to look at them and go, but it's got nothing to do with what we're talking about. Um, and, and, and what we're doing is a strategy behind the content. So let me just kind of start to go over a few of them. I'm just going to check the chat real quick. Melanie, thank you, Melanie. That is so nice of you to say. Happy New Year, Shafiq, uh, my spiritual friend. Hello. Ah, my Perla, how are you? Suzanne, Roger, good to see you. So what we need to be doing is the different strategies. So let's start talking strategies, all right? The first strategy which so many people do, but the perception can actually, it can work against you, but everybody seems to want to do it, is called the I and me strategy. Okay? What the I and me strategy is, it's all about you. It's what you've accomplished. It's how great you are, what awards you've won, all those wonderful things, which I understand are important to tell people about. But if you do it too much, it, it's like being cocky. It's all about I, 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 me, 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 I, 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 me, me, me. No, I'm not a singer, so don't worry. But this is a strategy that can be used, but limited. This is something that needs to be limited. 
Yes, when something great happens for you, push it out there. Let people know. But maybe let them know in a way of how it benefits them. So uh, let me, Shafiq, I'm using you. Shafiq is a real estate agent in Queens, New York. So Shafiq, if you won an award, that's an amazing thing. You want to get it out there and show the world and it's showing how great you are. But let's take it a step further. I'm so honored to get the New York State uh, bronze level. It, it, it means I was able to help so many clients like yourselves out there. Notice how I changed it? It was about me, but it, how it benefited the people that I worked for. The perception now is so important. So you have to understand the one thing about social media, it's all about perception. The message and the perception of what they're, or, or, or we talked about earlier, what they are understanding. So what we need to be doing is taking the eyes and me's and showing how it benefits you. Those are the important aspects. So, hi Adele. Uh, thank you for your email. I'm not sure why you threw it in the chat, but thank you. Um, so think about that I and me strategy. It can be used, but it should be limited. Now, I know in the real estate world, we're coming into January, February, March, and we're going to start talking all about the awards that you've received for your following years of transactions or how much sales you've done, your volume you've done, the, the, all the different things. And those are great to be out there, but limit how you do it and also explain the benefit. Why it's so important that you got that award why it's so important to you and why it's so important to them, to your audience. So that's the I and me strategy, okay? Now we're gonna talk about the you strategy. The you strategy is all about everybody who's watching. It's all about them. It's not about you. It's all about them. And if you think about it, it's all about your customers. So, hey, good to see you, Corey. Anybody in the New York area needs a photographer? Need to go to her. Need to go to her. Anybody in the New York area? Fantastic. She's my photographer. So, um, the you strategy is how it benefits your audience. So, Corey, I'm going to use you as an example. So, why is a great headshot important? And better yet, why is it so important to update it on a yearly or two-year basis instead of getting it every five or six years? So, Corey can be putting out information about photography on what the benefit is of why it's important to update your photos. Now, we've all come across real estate agents where some of these photos are 10 years old on a business card. They should be updated periodically. Let them know the real you. Again, it's about them, not you. So, you know, things you want to be talking about is all those benefits. So when you have a, a restaurant and I think there was somebody here who's got a restaurant. I'm not sure. Um, the restaurant tours. what you need to be doing is why you cook the way you do with what you do, the ingredients. If you're a healthy restaurant and you're using all these things, the benefits of those things. Because now it's about your company, but at the same time, it's about your audience. Now, this is the biggest strategy that's going to be needed here this year. It's about personalizing it to your audience. Now, granted, how I said it earlier, you need to, each piece of content you're going to put out, Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, Fridays, Saturdays, Sundays, whatever, if you're putting out seven a week, five a week, four a week, whatever it is, each content has technically its own strategy. What is the idea of this post piece of content 
And what is it being put up there for? What is it going to hopefully, and we don't want to use the hope strategy. I hope this goes viral. I hope this gets comments. I hope this gets, you know, likes and shares. Never work on hope with business. Okay? So what we want to do, oh, my spiritual friend, I see you use Corey too. That's great to hear. <laughs> um, so, so what you need to be doing is each piece of content, why are you putting it out there? What is its benefit? What do you hope to achieve from it? You know, when we think about uh, pieces of content that you're putting out there, most people think, I want to get more sales. And I understand that totally. But remember, social media is a tool to help get you seen. It's another form of media, newspaper, radio, magazine, TV, social media. Now, social media is the biggest one out there now. You can get out to the more, whether you use the ad system or you're just doing organic. Excuse me one second. But what you need to do is literally have that strategy. What do I want from this piece of content? Today's webinar, I want to help you understand more. That's what I'm here for. I want you to understand more. Okay, so that's the you strategy. It's all about them. It has nothing to do with you. So if I go on to the next one, we call it the caring strategy. Now, the caring strategy is a little bit of the you strategy. However, the caring strategy brings in a little bit of what we call education. I'm not going to just put out a piece of content and say it's all about you, blah, 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 blah. I'm going to tell you why it's all about you. I'm going to educate you why. It's going to show that you care that your future clients, your clients technically now, cl clients from the past, why they believe in you so much because you educate them to make the right decisions on their own. Think about it. For all the realtors out there, that's important. That's what real estate is. You are the guide. Photographer, Corey, when I went to her and didn't know her, she guided me what would be best at that time. That's why I picked her. She gave me the option. She told me what was the different things. Those are important things. So caring strategy is showing you care about them. And that's what makes a huge difference from the you strategy to the caring strategy. It's not just about what it benefits you, it's why it benefits you. And, and to give the correct information and to help them. So from there, we're going to go to the product strategy. Now, this is a big one. What is your product or service, okay? Again, the benefits and all that information is always involved. But what is your product? What is your product for? What does your product entail, will help with? Why is it important in life? What is it going to do for them? These are the things you want to go over in your mind when you're creating your own content. You know, whether you're, you're, you're doing it on your own or you're having somebody do it for you, like I, our team does it for four companies, you got to be on the same page. You have to understand the message coming from you, why it's so important. Okay, so if you have different products and uh, realtors, I said it earlier, there's luxury buyers and sellers, there's first time, there's condos, there's, you have your niche. So your product is now going to become your niche. <coughs> Excuse me. So those are the things you want to start looking at and understand what is the product's benefits and reasons and everything and showing how it's going to work for them. So you're coming up on a product strategy. My product is all about social media. So how can I make social media fun and easily done 
and I know easily is a very hard word to use these days, but these are the things we want to look at so that you can be able to do it yourself. Now, if you can't do it yourself, then we need to look at courses and other things that can help you. So what we're going to be doing is the product strategy. What is your product? Why will it benefit? What's going to happen when I use it? Okay. Any questions along the way right now? I just want to take a quick breath before I go into a couple more. I have um, the, the other strategy. You know, there's, there's hundreds of strategies out there. The other strategy I want to talk about is the book strategy. The book strategy is if you have a book. If you have a book and you're trying to get it out to people, well, there's a strategy to do that. Yes, I could just put a picture of my book up there and say, hey, I wrote a social media book. You can get it on Amazon. You can get it at Barnes & Noble. You can get it all over the place. It's not a strategy. That's just an ad. So you want to refocus. So... You want to be able to do those type of things in a way. A a book, if you have a book or a PDF that you're trying to give out to people, educate people online about it. Read, read Read a quick little chapter of it. Put it out there as a little PDF online that people can download. These are all things you can be doing. So, all right. So those are the different kinds of strategies that are out there. Uh, I'm going to take a break here. I want to see what's going on in the chat. Tell me who's here. Anybody new here? Anybody want to have a question about strategies in general? Please type it in there. I know we're, like I said, we're on YouTube. We're on LinkedIn. We're on Facebook. We're, we're all over the internet today. But what are things that are st- stopping you from the idea of strategies. So I'm going to take a little water. I'm sure somebody's got a question. i got to wait 10 seconds because of the understanding live streaming. There's a delay. So, and that's also part, you know, listen, I just want to throw this in here. There are five different ways, minimum, you can be posting content. One, the first one, obviously, is just a written out little thing. It's called a status update, the old days in Facebook. What's your status update? You know, it's a written only. It's usually short form. It could be maybe four or five sentences, maybe a little longer these days. But it's just written, and that's it. The next one up is a picture, whether it's a meme, a graphic, a picture, anything that you do with those with a little bit of description at the top, and then boom, that's that one. The third one is maybe you're sharing articles from a magazine or a newspaper, an online service, and you're sharing those out. Now, one thing I want to tell you about those is I see a lot of people share articles, and the drawback I find from that is all they do is click share and post, and they never write anything in the description. Something that you need to do, literally, give your two cents opinion about what is written in there. It could be a paragraph or two. It could be three sentences. It doesn't matter. Give your opinion of what, you know, hey, saw this great article about um, uh, about this restaurant in Boulder. And they talk about what they're doing different with the healthy foods. Really liked it. Tell me more what you liked about it also. And then with that, share the article. Show people you've read the article. Not just hit share button. Maybe there's something in there. You know, you got to be careful when you just hit share and go. You don't read it. There might be something in there that you don't believe in. You don't just want to share stuff out that comes back and haunts you later. So read the article skim it even if it is, and put a little blurb up there about what that article meant to you. Makes it more personal. And always ask a question. All your content, you should always be asking questions. Tell me what you think about this home. Tell me what you think about this type of food. 
Which picture do you like better if it's choosing from two different pictures that Corey took or somebody else, a photographer? Get people's opinions. So, so you have the, the written, you have the picture, you have the articles. Then you have video. Now, video is many different formats now. There's long-form video, which we're doing today for at least an hour. And then there's, let's see, uh, short-form video, which is usually 15 seconds, maybe 30. Um, and that's your TikTok and your Reels and your stories. And a lot can be done with those things to be pushing out to get more content. You can actually use those to get people to come over to your other long-form things. And then there's IGTV, which has long-form video. So there's variations all over the place. And then the, the other support video is this, live. Let's put it out there live. So areas that we can be do. Now, Shafiq brought up a great comment. Strategies and content are time-consuming. And all I'm going to do is say yes. Yes, they are. Social media is part of the job. It's part of your marketing. It's part of the conception of trying to build your audience and see how many people we can get following us that enjoy our content, that are learning from us, and possibly in the future will we'll work with us, whether it's buying a house, eating at the restaurant, buying a widget. It doesn't matter. Booking a, a spiritual advisory, uh, doing all the different things. It is time consuming, very, very much so. But it will the, the time consumption will start to shorten as you do it more often. Now, what I mean by that is, is just like a habit, it takes 30 days to get a habit going. 30 days, but you got to do it every single day. So if you are posting daily on your social media, and you're using, and we're going to go over some of the tools that I use, and, and you know, I, I actually use two or three on the same thing to make this one piece of content. It's a learning curve. You'll start to do it faster because you'll have an image in your head of what you're trying to create. So it starts to get a little quicker as time goes on, but it's those initial first steps that are the hardest. Think of it as when you were five, six years old and you first took the training wheels off and you fell off your bike. But you got back up and you did it again. And you did it again. And you did it again. Next thing you know, you're, you're wobbly, but you're keeping it. You're starting to move a little better. So it's just the same. Creating content and using the tools to help create content that looks nice, that sounds nice, all these different things makes a huge difference. The more you do it, the better you become at it. So let me just go over to a comment I got from Polina. Uh, Polina, I think people are too concerned with appearing to be perfect. Oh, I love this comment. When in actuality, the public prefers imperfection and relatability. And Polina, you are so correct. Okay. Uh, quick Quick story. Uh, when Periscope came out in April of 2015, and that was one of the big ones that kind of helped to launch live streaming from your phone. Um, and what happened was I started working it right that first week it came out. And I loved it. I love the fact that I could talk to people live on my phone. They're, they're, they're writing messages and they're flying up and I'm doing some training and I'm talking tips and I'm doing all this stuff. And it was like springtime because it came out in April. So it must have been in May. And I went on daily, daily. I built up, I think within about a three, four week period, I had like eight or 10,000 people uh, following me on Periscope uh, because I was just giving out tips how to use Periscope, but also social media in general. Well, I was outside. It was a beautiful spring day. And I was outside on a lawn and I had my phone and I was kind of walking as I was talking. And does anybody here, let, let me know in the chat, when, when you get that sneeze going, you know, you get the itchiness, and it's one of those sneezes that's like so loud and so hard because it just came on so fast. It's 
it's like your whole body like shook. Does anybody else have that? Have that? So you need to, you know, you just get, you let out this huge sneeze. Well, I was outside on the grass. And guess what happened to my phone? Hachoo! And I dropped it. I was live. There was over 200 people watching me live on Periscope. And I'm sitting there going, oh, my God, I just dropped everybody. And so I grabbed down real quick. I picked up the phone. And all of a sudden, I went to say, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I was so upset that this happened. Well, guess what happens? I'm reading the comments as they're filtering up. And they're all going, God bless you, bless you, Gesundheit, God bless you, God bless you, LOL, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you, hundreds of them. And they were all laughing. And that moment showed me personally, this back in 2015, what Polina is saying right here in this statement. Audiences like to see not necessarily the word imperfection. I'm going to change the word, Polina. They want to see you be human, just like them. Think about it. You don't want to be above everybody, just like them. You're, you, you make mistakes. You have issues. You, things happen. And you become, because of the way she said it, prefers the imperfection, but being human, relatable. Because we've all done it. We've all done those crazy things. I mean, think about it. You go up to a microphone and the microphone goes out. And now you got to start to shout. Or you start to have a coughing fit when you're talking to somebody. These are human things that we need to be able to do. And it's okay to show those things. You don't have to have TV quality high-end cameras, speakers. Uh, you don't have to ha necessarily have the Adobe Final Cut software to make this gorgeous thing on every piece of content. It's not necessary. You want to get your message across. You want it to be relatable. You want it to be seen. As long as your picture is clear, your sound is clear if you're doing video, your picture, if your graphic is good, that's what counts more. So, Paulina, I totally agree with you. Okay? So, and and D saying it best, don't overthink your content. Right? Don't overthink it. Don't make it. Nothing's perfect in life. Nothing. I don't care who you talk to. Nothing's perfect. You can't find the perfect spouse. You can't have perfect children. You can't have the perfect job. You can't have the perfect client. It's nothing's perfect. It might be perfect for you, but as a generalization, there's no such thing as perfect. You can't have perfect content. I've had pieces of content that I thought were great, and they turned out nuts. And then I had a piece of content I put up for fun, and it went viral. You just don't know sometimes, and you got to stop looking at the numbers as much. With the people that are involved today, D, Roger, Melanie, Polina, Perla, uh, Corey, you know, I can, I can list all the names that I'm getting comments from across the whole three, three things. I want to interact with you because you're here. That's more important. Interact with the people that are interacting with you. Then start reaching out to other people so that they'll start to interact with you. So that's what we want to focus on in 2022. You need to personalize your social media. You got to have your strategies in place, but you got to personalize them. So, all right. So we're about halfway in, and I'm going to start going over some tools that I use that I love. I'm going to try something new here on StreamYard to you guys. I'm going to try to do a share screen. Um, so sometimes I may be off screen. Sometimes they may be on screen, my little picture of me. I'm trying to work that out still. So I definitely want to check this out. So 
Definitely keep the comments coming. If there's questions, anything about a certain one, I'll come back to it. But let me add in my stream. As you can see, it looks like, I feel like I'm in the matrix when I look at this. Uh, but let me go to the first one. And the first one we're going to talk about is Canva. All right. Does everybody see my Canva? Let me know just in the comments real quick. Can everybody see that? Um, with me as a little picture on the side, I'm just going to go to my um, thing here. Yes, good. I can see it. Perfect. Okay. So Canva is an amazing product. Now I have the, the, the pro version, so I bought into it because it has some extra tricks and things that you can be doing with it. But Canva gives you the ability, just even right up front, different templates, different things that you want to do. They're already pre-sized for you. You want to make a logo, you want to do an Instagram post, a Facebook post. But even if you want to do it further, and I write Instagram, it's got the Reels video, the story size, all the different things. So if I go to a, uh, like to a story, they have some templates already made up. Now, the templates you can use, but you do have to have the pro version, but you can start from a blank one and do your own things. But they have all these amazing things, and you can change it up. So if I just wanted to do a good morning one, I can take that. I can add my logo to it if I wanted. Move it up there. So I have a nice little thing. And it's preset up already. But the biggest thing about with, with, with Canva is that you can create so many different things. So like here, these are, these are all... I've been using Canva for, Canva for over four years. So, you know, copy, you know, from 2017, all these different things. I've made banners. I make all these different stuff. I make fun stuff. I make little stuff. You know, you know, even when I, you know, fun stuff here, people who potentially pass on point customers, customers just share info. This is your bullseye about your social media. People just share your info. They're on the black. Potential customers are in the red, blue, past customers. Right? On point. So there's many things that can be done on Canva that help you with the thing. And you can do it. Canva can be used for any social media platform. All right? Any social media platform. So if I want to do LinkedIn... I go back to home. So when I go on the front, LinkedIn, do I want to do a cover or a banner, a post, the stories? They used to have stories. They will be getting it back. Maybe a video ad. They're already setting up size for you. And those are the important features that you want to do. Right, let me go back to here, see if there's some comments. I'm just going to remove this real quick. Yeah, Canva is is really, really great. And there is some uncut version and features in there. Um, now it has video ability that you can create 10 to 15 second little video clips on it, uh, audio clips over things. So they've really, really branched out all the different things that you can be doing. Hey, Lee, good to see you. So um, that's Canva. So let me go on to the next one. We're going to talk to one called Clipscribe. I love Clipscribe. Okay? Just pointing it out right now. Clipscribe will take any of your videos and it will literally transcribe them for you so that they can come across the screen. So I'm going to get into Clipscribe and show you all about it. So Clipscribe gives you the ability to put on the top, let's say, a banner, 
and on the bottom, your words coming across. So I'm just going to go to mine real quick. And I do this for some of my clients. I set it up. I upload. You upload a video. Okay, usually your video should be under five minutes. They should be anyway, but under five minutes. And then you have all these different things. So I'm going to, I've done this a lot. As you can see, I want to get something that's, you know what, I can do, continue. So here we go. I'm going to go into editing a video so you can get an idea. I don't think you'll be able to hear it uh, through StreamYard. I will play it once and we'll see if you can hear it. But so I took a design. It gives you different optional designs. And I can change the color of the background. I can add uh, logos to it. I can add the two different things. And when I hit play, Hi, my name's Dana Danvers, and I want to as it's speaking, it's, it's giving me on the bottom the clip. Now, you can do different sizes. You can do the normal video landscape. You can do a square. You can do a story. They can do all these things. And all they do is they will transcribe it when you go in to make sure you can go in to the individual things and respell something if it was taken the wrong way from the verbiage. Uh, all these things. You can redesign the color, the logos, all those things. It's an amazing product. I love it. Why is this an important product? Just so you know, it's $16 a month. You get 100 minutes of transmission which is a lot if you think about it. If you do five minute videos and 100 minutes, that means you can do 20 videos a month through here. So why is this an important feature? Let me explain why Clipscribe is huge. 70% of people watching videos do not have the sound on. Let's say that again. 70% of people watching videos online do not have the, have the sound on. Now, why don't they have the sound on? They don't have the sound on because, well, they're in a public place. They're in a car. They're on a plane. They're in a train. They're in a bus. They're at the doctor's office. They're, they're at work. They're not going to put their sound on to interrupt with other things that are going on around the area. So what happens is if it doesn't have the lines going across, the closed captions, the subtitles, they're going to scroll you right by. They're not going to watch the video. But if it has those closed captions, if it has those, I like to call them subtitles, not closed captions, because that's different subtitles, they'll sit there and watch it because they can read along. It's a great feature. Again, Clipscribe, not expensive, $16 a month. So if you do want to get more video work, even with an overlay of the voice, this is something you could be doing. Good one, guys, right? You like Clipscribe? Okay, let me go to the next one. This one is called Headliner. Now, Headliner is if you're podcasting or you're doing audio work and you want to bring it back to a podcast or something. So let me go to Headliner. So this is a automatically turns podcasts into a shareable video. Now, this is where you get to start intertwining different things. I can literally take... Let me log in. Okay, so I can upload a podcast or I like to do teasers. So like these are some of my projects. So one of my clients, Deeple, um, let me see if I can get back into that. So I took, she was interviewing somebody on her podcast. I created 
this, not the pink line here that's that's moving. I created the graphic on Canva, okay? And then I brought the graphic in after I uploaded this. So when I hit play, we hold as they speak, notice the line is moving. Store those things in our bodies until so it's a podcast, but this is a 35-second teaser. Our brain has this wonderful okay? ability. I took a small part of it and then linked it in the comments back to where it's playing. So if it's on Spotify, if it's on one, if it's a video you did on YouTube, I can take a teaser and put it over on LinkedIn with the link back so that people can watch it. So this is great. So th this is a, you know why? It's a unique looking way of a piece of content. So again, I can change the color of the um, the waveform, different waveform. I can do a padded bottom one. I can do at the bottom so it's deeper. So now when I hit play, you'll see it a little different. Knowing things until we're ready to know them. So I can also change the color. And it's all kinds of trauma. It's it's. So this is a great, different look that, that people will notice, all right? That's the thing. We're trying to get noticed. We're literally trying to get noticed. How can we make our content better so that we don't look like everybody else but get our points across? We have to look a little different sometimes. We have to look outside the box. Cool. Any comments so far? We're talking about the first three so far. I got a few more tools I'm going to go over with you. Lots of talking, lots of water. Okay. Well, uh, let me go back. We're going to go to number four Camtasia. Uh, Camtasia takes a lot of my computer uh, things. So while StreamYard's on, I can't do it. But Camtasia is a video editing program. I love it. It gets updated every two years. It's got amazing things. It's how you can edit your videos. <clears throat> Again, any size. You can add pictures to it, graphics to it, uh, splice it, you know, everything you got to do. And I'll be honest, it's a learning curve, but it's not too hard. Not too hard. Uh, but it's something to look at. If you're looking doing more video for yourself and again you don't have anybody doing it for you you could be getting camtasia now there's also other ones out there you can do on your phone called imovie or maybe adobe um uh, spark uh, all these different ones that are out there so camtasia is one that i would suggest okay this is a kind of a hidden gem lumen 5. if some of you are writers out there i really suggest lumen 5 um, <clears throat> Lumen 5 has the ability to take a blog or, or article and turn it into a video. So if I want to create a new video, so let's do it right now. So there's different templates you can use. Let's do a how-to. Where do you want it to go to? So let's say it's going to go to uh, LinkedIn. Let's do a little LinkedIn. Okay. See this part right up here where it says import? This is where it gets fun. I need to find an article real quick. A link in article. Let's see if it works with this. I'm just going to go to a LinkedIn help thing. I'm going to pull the link of that article. I'm going to put it in here. I'm going to import it. 
So right now it's importing the article. And it puts it in the article. And then I can take parts of it, the about section, and it puts a picture in. And let's say I want to talk about the safety center. Safety. Cook. Notice how it's pulling in pictures that might be incorporated with it. Now what it's doing is, I'm going to go to preview. It turns it into an article. I mean a video. So you can take a blog or an article and turn it into a short video. Highlight the parts you want in there and it makes it into a video. You can add your logo to it. You can add other things to it. So those are things you can do with Lumen 5. I don't remember price-wise. It wasn't that. You can add music in the background, the media, your style. Uh, if you do buy through it, it'll take the watermarks off. Um, or you can add a watermark onto yours. That's you make it yours. So there's many different levels you can do with Lumen 5. It's a great way to take your written work and turn it into your video work. So it's a great product. Love all the video to you. All right, so Dee's chiming in. Love all the video tools. People love video content so much captivating than words. It, it's so true. So true, D. Okay, so what else we got? What else we got? Okay, this is a app for your phone. It's called Photo Leap. It's a way to um, take photos on your phone and edit them. And when I mean edit them, they can do a lot of different functions. You can change the backgrounds. It'll hone in on a picture. Great, great app. There's Photo Leap, there's Video Leap, and there's another one. I use the Photo Leap because video I do on my own. Uh, Photo Leap is right there on your phone. So if you have a beautiful house and you want to make it a sunny day instead of a rainy day, these are things that you can do. Okay, so Photo Leap's a great program. This is one of my all-time favorite apps. And it's right there. It's free. And it's right on everybody's computer. So this is called Remove. All right, I'm going to go to Remove. So you go to remove.bg, and it's you can remove an image background. Now, I really want you to watch how fast this works. So you got a picture of yourself. You want to upload an image. So let me go to... Gotta find a picture. That's the hardest part now. Should have had one of these set up. Uh, hold on. Hold on. Don't you go away. That's why I need to go in there. By the way, if there's any questions, type them in there. All right, I think I gotta go in here. Ah, uh, here we go. All right, so I got all these pictures done. Corey, your pictures. So let's say I want to take one of these pictures. This is a good one. This is me standing up against a wall, uh, kind of a concrete, dirtier wall, I'm wearing a purple shirt. But let's say I want to take me and put myself in a different type of style. So I hit open. Ladies and gentlemen, the wall is gone. It's gone. All I have to do is hit the download button, and I now have this picture. Did you see how fast that was? Now, granted, this isn't using the power and, and, and uh, PowerPoint really getting into the every pixel and detail and for high density stuff. It's for social media, for yourself. These are great tools, and this is free. It's right there, remove.pg. All I do is hit download, 
And there you go, right there, I have the picture. I can bring it into Canva, put it against a different type of wall, put it somewhere else. I love this software. I know they got pricing, but guess what? One free credit, 50 free previews. I have the free account. I've been using it for a long time. That's 50, you can do this 50 times a month. And it works on app or Windows. So definitely check that out. Okay, let me get into some of the com, com, uh, comments here. So, uh, Shafiq, any advice for choosing the correct hashtags? How I love remove.bg and I owe it all to you. Oh, thank you, Shafiq. That's right. You were in my program, the other one. Um, yeah, remove is great. Remove is, and it's free. It's free. Can't beat that. And it's good quality. It's good quality. Uh, but but according to your hashtags, uh, there are different programs out there um, that you want to study hashtags on. My suggestion would be, I'm trying to remember the name of the one I want, uh, Hashtagify. And uh, what was the other one I need? What was the other one? Hold on. I'm looking it up for you, Shafiq. There is a program called Hashtag Scraper. I'll put it in the, the thing. Uh, hashtag Scraper. Let me see if I can open that up. Yeah, Hashtag Scraper. It's good for Instagram, which is similar to LinkedIn and Facebook. So I would definitely check out Hashtag Scraper. So I hope you got that. Um, Charles Campbell, send me an email, send me a message. We can talk privately about that. I am going to talk about a program that I just started in two weeks, uh, which I will go over. But I also do personal one-on-one -on -one and management programs too. Uh, Polina, thank you. And Blanca, hey, how are you? Yeah, remove.com is really, really great. Okay, so let me see. Okay, so so those are the main tools. Now, the only other tool I really want to talk to you about, it's not necessarily a tool, it's about um, uh, you batch make your content, okay? So you make all this great content and maybe you take a Saturday night and a glass of wine and you've got the music on or TV on and kids are out or whatever the situation and you're making a whole bunch of content and you want to schedule it, okay? I'm a big thing about scheduling. I love to schedule ahead. Love to schedule ahead. There are some of my clients who are two weeks ahead on our scheduling. That's how much in advance we have the content. So that if you go away for a few days, content is still going out. So you're pre-scheduling it ahead. But I don't use the schedulers that are out there. I'm, I'm still not sure. I only use one of them. One of them I use... And it's only for LinkedIn. I use Hootsuite. And I only set it up for LinkedIn to schedule ahead of time. I don't use it for Twitter. I don't use it for Facebook. I don't use any of them. Because Facebook, first of all, has its own scheduler. All right? You can schedule on YouTube your videos to go out next week or the week after. You can schedule on Facebook with your Instagram and your Facebook business page. And you can literally... You go into your Facebook business page and you go into, in fact, you know what? I think I'm just going to have to show you. I you know, always say the best way to do it is to show it. So let me go here. And let me get back onto the stream. You guys should all see my Facebook business page, Social Leader. I go into what's called Business Suite. And I can go into my posts and stories. Okay. And from here, I can create a post. 
I can have it go to my Facebook or my Instagram or both. I can do text. I can add a photo. I can add a video, create a video. A lot of little things you can do in here. I can put get messages like they do on the ads. I can do all those great things. But let me just do. See over here on the bottom right, it says publish right down with the arrow. I can schedule posts. Put in my date. Put in the time I want it out. Hit save. Schedule. Very simple, very easy. By the way, they just recently added in the next past few months. You can also set up your stories. So if you want to have some stories go out in the future, you can create them right here and schedule the stories for Facebook business page and your Instagram if it's tied to it. So these are some good features. All right. Let me get rid of some of these things. Okay. So, oh, Roger, hope you come back soon. Watch the replay. Um, all right. Any other comments before I show some good stuff that is coming out in the next two weeks? All right. Here we go. It is that time. Comes down to do it yourself or should you get help? If you're doing it yourself, you need to understand and have all the structure and all the strategies, know your tools and do all those things. And I'm not saying it can't be done. I do it for myself, but I also do it for other people. I know people that do do it yourself. You just have to be committed. Remember. Biggest thing I'll tell you right now is you should be doing a post a day. Facebook, Instagram, minimum one post a day. Uh, LinkedIn, four, maybe five posts a week. That's it. YouTube, once a week. Those are your standard kind of thing. You can do more if you want. You could also do less if you want, but if you do less, you will not get the momentum, the momentum that you want to get for this year. So I want to show you something that I've been working on. And we, we're, we're doing this, which is fantastic. And of course, did I really do that? Did I really do that? All right. Can you imagine when you forget to get the right page up when you need it? Unbelievable, unbelievable, but hold on one second because it only takes me just a couple seconds to get this going. Okay, I want to talk to you about social media rising. Social media rising is a big performance uh, program that we literally just put up. Okay, um, and we're going to talk about it now. So, Social Media Rising Masterclass. This is a way to explode your social media. Okay, track those clients, social media rock stars. It looks like this four days a week, but it's not. It starts January 17th. It is eight weeks, twice a week. Twice a week for eight weeks. You can, there'll be a Monday morning class, a Monday, sorry, Monday, Wednesday morning class, Monday, Wednesday afternoon class. Tuesday, Thursday morning class, Tuesday, Thursday afternoon class. You only choose one of those time slots. So if you choose the Monday, Wednesday at 11 o'clock Eastern, that's all you do all week long for the next eight weeks. Okay? This starts January 17th. We are going to be going over so much. How to grow the following, creating engaging content, building your brand. We're going to go over advertising and organic maximizing the engagement, monitoring and tracking results. Each platform is special in its own way and the ins and outs of each platform. But guess what? It's not just going to be me teaching. It's also going to be guests. One of my guests will be Bridget Brooks. She's an ex-employee from Facebook. She'll be talking about paid advertising. I have other guests coming on, somebody who is a master of LinkedIn, 
Somebody who's going to be doing other things. They're going to be help teaching you. We're not selling. We're not doing anything. This is a true master class. So it'll be twice a week for eight weeks starting January 17th. So why is it different? First one off the bat, the class size is small. Each one of these four classes, whatever time if you choose to join us, there's only 15 people in a class. That's it. We want to work with you and help you grow. There's too many people in the class. We can't do that. We want to take that time, individual help, live, interactive, in-depth training. Like I said, guest industry leaders, up-to-date data. If something changes, you're involved right away. All the different platform strategies. Remember, each platform has a different strategy. It does have a different sense of feel on the platform. The way you post on Facebook is not the way you post on LinkedIn. We're going to have worksheets, checklists, work programs. All of it is already set up and ready to go. So it is called Social Media Rising Masterclass. Okay. It will start the week of the 17th. It will be two classes a week, approximately 90 minutes. We will be doing it privately on Zoom. Uh, they will be recorded, so your class you can obviously refresh on. There will also be a Facebook group to talk about things in. You can choose either Monday, Wednesdays, or Tuesday, Thursdays. You can also choose the AM or the PM session. Each week is going to go over new subjects for the week. The worksheets will be emailed out each week before classes begin. You will have homework for the week. This is going to be intense, but by this end of this, you're going to master social media for your business. Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, YouTube, and more. Plus, I got a few surprises for y'all. Price, $1,500 for the whole eight weeks. So what I suggest is, because it has been leaked out already, and there have been people that are signing up, and then there's more information about me, um, just generally what I've been involved in and everything else. So social media rising. This will be, if you signed up for this program or some of my past, this will be emailed out to everybody. I will put the link in the comments uh, for all these things also. I just need to remove from here. So those are the things that we are doing now with social media this year. It's going to be a very active year. So let me go over some of these posts. And okay, so spiritual friend, is it bad to cross post same content on TikTok and Instagram? Or should you have different content? I love that question. A lot of people post the same things to the same people every day. So think about it this way. If you're following me on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram, and every single day you see the same post across all three, why do you need to be following me on all three? I want you to follow me on LinkedIn for one reason. I want you to follow me on Facebook for another reason. And I want you to follow me on Instagram for a different reason. Now, can you take posts you've used in the past and put them over to another one later? Yes. Don't post the same things every day to all your accounts because you're going to lose, you're spreading out your people. You're going to lose people. That's where it comes down to. So good, great question, spiritual friend. And spiritual friend, just to make sure, is that, I'm going to take a guess, Anna? I think, I think you're Corey's friend, Anna. I'm not sure. So, but that's a great question. I like that question a lot. So if you are interested in the masterclass, sign up quick because, like I said, 15 spots. That's it in each one. So if you want to get the one that you want better, now's the time to do it. Email will be going out probably in about a half hour to everybody uh, that signed up. Uh, so you'll get all that information. Um, we're going to take a very strong look at social media this year. There's going to be lots of changes this year, too. So we need to keep up on it. So any other questions before we leave? I hope I see some of you guys in the master class. 
And definitely share this out if you think this was helpful, whether it's you're watching it on Facebook or LinkedIn or YouTube. Put it out wherever you, you think might be benefit for the people to learn. Uh, we went over a lot of things today, and it was fun. So any other last-minute questions? Let me take that off. Otherwise, I think we're going to head out of here just a little after 2 o'clock. So we kept this about an hour, which is even better because I know a lot of you want to get back to work and start doing things. If there are questions about the Social Media Masterclass or you have a question about working with me privately for managing or just for coaching, send me a message. You can email me. Um, that's okay, Julia. You'll be able to watch this in a few minutes. Okay. Um, let me see what we got. Thank you for being so awesome and helpful. Sorry to have to log off to catch another meet. Perla, not a problem. Hopefully some of your peeps where you work may want to check this out and maybe join the masterclass. Uh, Polina, is there such a thing as posting too much or too often? Uh, you want to know something, Polina? No. It's kind of yes, but it's no. If your content is creating engagement and people like it, you can never post too much because people like it. If your content's not getting any action, any engagement, any of those things, one of two things is happening. Either, 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 your content is not resonating with the audience you're trying to get to, or you just don't have the right audience. It's one of those two things. So we probably need to look at your content and maybe tweak it so that it gets to be more engaging. And it might be the strategy that we talked about in the beginning. It could be, you know, the I strategy, the me strategy, the you strategy, the caring strategy, all those different aspects. So, all right. I hope that's helpful, Polina. Uh, Julia, want to watch the replay? It's going to be up very, very soon. I promise you. Uh, D, I was so good to see you here, D. Uh, D, we definitely need to catch up. I want to talk to you about the uh, masterclass. I think you would definitely enjoy that. And Shafiq, thanks so much for being here as always. It's been a pleasure talking with you. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to close this down. Hope you have an amazing day. Message me questions. Message me information. Look for my emails because we're going to be getting this up in two weeks, in less than two weeks. So if you want to be involved or if you want to private coaching or management, reach out and I will talk to you real soon. Take care, everybody.